Austria and service judge Jasper Larsson from Denmark. between the unseeded Efia Muskens and Selena Peak of the Netherlands, who we see making their way onto court. And their opponents from Malaysia, the number four seeds. The number four seeds from Malaysia. Sisters, Pui and Ung, Pui Lin Ung of Malaysia. They are currently studying and living in Loughborough at the university. And this is their final year of studies before they return to Malaysia to be part of the national team. Shaking hands with the umpire and the service judge. Toss of a coin to decide who gets the choice to serve or return and serve. And also, which end of the court the players would like to start the match at. Now, the shuttles have been tested prior to this match. Agreed for a speed of three. So the speed, speed is varying from one three, to five. Also, on the middle of the range speed shuttle. That obviously depends on how warm the building is. Three, 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 three. I'm very pleased to say, alongside me, is a legend of the game of Scottish badminton, playing 117 times for his country, the winner of the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in 1986, and is not to forget the Vice President of Badminton Scotland. Welcome, Dan Travers. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, everyone. And I hope we're in for a feast of badminton here today. Now, this is the first time this Scottish Open has been a Grand Prix event. The Scottish Open has been played for many, many years. This is the second time that this tournament has been played in such an incredible venue. Now, Dan, would you have played in a venue like this in Scottish Open in your day? Never, never. It's a wonderful venue and it holds us very, very well for next year's Commonwealth Games. It's absolutely fantastic to play in and visually um, there was never a facility like this in my opinion. It's just beautiful for playing badminton. Absolutely, some of the venues that have played down to Royal World really do make for a spectacle of basketball. And the players on court just warming up for the match. Now, the two pairs have actually played against each other very recently at the start of this month in the Bitburger International Tournament. And on that occasion, it was the unseeded Muskets and Pete that took the title that was the final. It was a close match, though. Dutch pair winning 22-20, 21-15. So there is history between the two pairs. 
players have finished with the knockoffs. Just a few little last minute drinks of water before the action starts. final between the nearest to us in the yellow shirts, Hui Hun Hung and Hui Lin Hung of Malaysia. On the far side of the court, as we look, Afia Muskins and Selena P, the unseeded player from the Netherlands. Now they are unseeded because of the fact that they have only played eight tournaments together, which in the world of badminton means it's not a full quota of tournaments. Their ranking doesn't allow them to be one of the seeds here this week. of the two pairs, like I said, the Dutch pair only played eight tournaments together, but a lot of success within that time. Semi-finals of the Dutch International, runners-up in the Canadian Open, semi-final of the Belgian Open, semi-final of the Dutch Open, and also they were winners of the Bitburger Open Grand Prix Gold Tournament earlier this month. So a formidable partnership. Very impressed yesterday with the defence of the Dutch pair. James Nedelcheva and Bankier. Nedelcheva from Bulgaria and Bankier from Scotland. Uh, I thought they defended very, very well indeed, uh, even when they were under extreme pressure. So it's over to all. Well, I know a little bit about the Malaysian girls. I used to train at Loughborough University myself and have played these two on many occasions. And they do possess very, very solid defences as well. So we could be Three, into a match of who can last the longest, who is going to be the most patient. Shuttle is drifting long. So it was over. You could see the Malaysian girl just off, slightly off balance when she hit that Anthony and pushed it out the back. Trying to be very patient throughout the game here. And the shuttle just lands long once again. The Malaysians just struggling with a bit of length at the start of this match. Now, Dan, obviously, ladies' doubles is known for long, long rallies. What is it that both pairs have got to do to you know, stamp their authority on this match? Yeah, I think you said it there at the start, uh, Anthony, for me, uh, it's who's mentally strong enough just to continue to be patient and then when they get the opportunity, really go for it. Uh, I'm amazed that the Malaysians have hit two shots long because all week this has been the slow side that they're on at the moment. So the drift is slightly coming against them, but they've over hit two lifts already. And that one seems to drift a little bit wide. Now the drift in badminton, obviously all arenas around the world have air conditioning to keep the temperature nice and low for the people watching, but in turn that allows the shuttle to be blown a little bit in one direction, so almost creating a wind within the hall. Players know it. I think that was a very intelligent shot from the Malaysian girl there. The Dutch, I feel, really pressed the front of the court and the Malaysians saw this there. With Peak just pushing and moving Seven, forward, and she lifted the shot over her head. 
And it's a great start for the Dutch. 7-3, they lead. Doesn't really look to me like the Malaysians have come out the blocks firing. Trying to create an open. Wonderful defence from the Ung. A wonderful rally. Great defence from the Malaysians. But as you could see, constant attack was played towards Hui. Trail 4-7 in the opening game. Very quick on the So she knew it was coming. So he'd done explosive movement to get backwards. A terrible miss. That was a, that's a feature, I think, of the Dutch play there, how keen they are to press the front of the court. You saw the girl, she lifted the shot, but she almost went down on one knee rather than run away back in the court and try and retrieve from a deeper position. They're always pressing their, their opponents. Much better from the Malaysians. There's been a few mistakes in the start of this match. Definitely the Dutch pair will be trying to pick on the slightly younger sister of Ern. Oh. Uh, the attack towards Ern once again. It was creative. Placing the shuttle into the tram line and that gives them the midway lead of 11-5. No flash the coaches are allowed on to court for a bit of a talk to give advice to their players no coach for the Dutch team which is very strange to see Dan what do you think the Malaysians coach would be saying to them knowing that they're trailing 11-5 I think he'd be telling them that they have to try and keep the attack and then go over the top of the, the Dutch pair but I would also go over the top of them wide they're trying to keep it very channeled in the middle, in the middle area of the court. I would use it and try and turn them from side to side. I think the point before the break showed something for me where the Dutch hit a smash from round the head straight down the tram line. The Malaysian girls tend to go backhand bias and because they're not doing a forehand defence, there's a huge gap down, right down the tram line. And they're going to have to turn and go forehand bias if they're hoping to deal with that. I think it'll be a feature of the game. Oh! There you go, Dan. Exactly what you right said. The first smash seven. place down the tram line. We're creating a weaker defensive shot. And the net kill put away. 12-7. Okay. A bit of luck with the next board. Seven. Muskins apologises. 13 7, 6 point lead. Yeah. Oh. A great read at the net from Pete. It just seems to have a lot of intelligence to the Dutch play, Dan. You know, like you say, they're not just going for the simple straight line smashes, the angles are having effect. Yeah, and the placement is so important that they're picking out the forehand side for, of the Malaysian defence. <laughs> they know the reply is going to come straight. Um, often players do that and you can get 
some very gifted players who can play cross court off the backhand defence from the forehand side of the body, but very few. And if you can hit hard enough, then it can cause problems for them. Very predictable area. You see both both Dutch girls moving forward there and then having to adjust their movement to go back. I really like them. I think they're very, very forceful. They're always looking to get to the front of the court. And that's where the game's won. Well, the tactics definitely paying off. 15-7 now in the opening game. The difference for me there was, was the Malaysian girl pushed cross court. Her partner was still way behind her. If that had been the Dutch girls, they would have been up side by side, taking the next shuttle early. That's wonderful placement down the line from Peak. Placement so close 16, to the edge seven. of the court. They do also seem to possess a little bit more power from the back of the court than the Malaysians. And that, that's what they've got to do. The Malaysians have to get the attack. If they're going to try and defend against the Dutch, I, I think they'll be found wanting. That's much better from the Malaysians. Like you said, Dan, get on the attack, take the game to your opponents very difficult to win a match just on the defence. They still trail by seven points, 9-16. service return error from Peak. I think that's what they're doing, they're, they're, they're trying to, to dominate, um, but the defence, they are very good from the Dutch. The difference there, the Dutch girls tell each other what serves are hitting, the Malaysians prefer to use the shuttle behind the back and give a little signal to each other. Great anticipation at the net from, from Ern. A very well played rally from the Malaysians. Can you see it here? Muskin's dropping the racket and the Malaysian girl. As soon as she dropped it, the Malaysian girl was forward pressing the net. As you say, really hunting the attack there. Very, very good. Clever, clever tactics from the Malaysians. Muskins caught off guard with the cross court clear. A weak backhand reply allowed Lynn at the net to put the shuttle away. But they still trail by five. 12 17, 11 minutes been played. Put away from Pete. Just three now required. Each game being played to 21. And that's the scores reach 20 points all. A rare miss from Peak. Raising the shuttle into the net. You see, trying to keep the attack there. Rather than just, I felt she could have punched into the, the forehand corner of the Malaysians there. I thought it was wide open, but she's just trying to maintain the attack. That's a great defensive shot from, from Lynn. She is the girl that has the best defence out of the partnership. Surprising, they went down the line to her. 14-18. String gone from Muskins, I'm sure. Yeah, 
tell. The attack went back onto her immediately. Be very, very difficult to play any shots in badminton with a broken string. I think the Malaysians have upped their pace here. Uh, they're, they're really hunting the shuttle more at the front of the court. Using a lot more power and very aggressive in their movement towards the shuttle. Yeah, they did seem to start the match quite slowly. But do you think that could have something to do with the psychological side, knowing that they lost to these opponents last time? I don't think so. I think they're just out for a Sunday stroll just to warm up, Anthony. I think they're now in top gear, and uh, I think it's very, very interesting here. Yeah. Yeah. Great defence once again from Lynn. Like I said, in a few rallies ago, she does possess an incredible defence. And if you were going to smash any side of the court, I would be aiming at the younger sister, Ern. I think that's what the Dutch will be trying to get the younger sister in this court so as they can exploit the forehand side. But definitely, as you're saying, the older sister has a fantastic defence in that area. 18-16 now. Just two points in here, considering that was seven. A big mix-up from the Dutch, but they got away with it. Oh, a great rotation from the Dutch. The defence was good from the Malaysians. The Dutch just requiring two for the opening game. 19-16. attack from one player to the other but once again the smash at Lynn she whips the shuttle from almost inside out cross court like you said earlier Dan not many players can do that in the game 17-19 and I think this is one area where the Dutch are losing out at the moment with no coach to advise them that they feel a little bit under pressure they're getting a bit edgy and then they're smashing at the wrong player smashing at the younger sister and, and get predictable replies. Just be patient when they're doing it. Out! Oh, and a good call. I heard the shout of out from Lynn. 18, a good call it was indeed. Now they just trail by one. in a mistake from Pete. Obvious tactics from the Malaysians to keep their opponents working and they've drawn the scores level after trailing by seven points. The scores tied at 19 all. And I, I did feel that the, the Dutch missed a chance there. They had the young girl in the right hand court uh, and they had a lift quite a, about three quarters length court. I felt they should have hit her forehand side. But they're, they're hitting an awful lot of smashes into the girl with a good defence, and I can't understand it. Yeah. Oh, that's great placement. Cross court smash onto the hip of Serena Peak. And after all the early running, it's the Malaysians that have. Game point, 2019 they lead. And if I say no to a towel down. Oh, 
saw the opportunity of the net. Tried to be aggressive. Scores are tied at 20 all. Uh, Badminton, once it reaches 20 all, a pair has to be two points clear to take the opening game. Gone wide. And that's the weak area, that's the, 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 the poor of defence player there. Just been found out at the right hip. And that's what they've got to do. The other girls it seems to have a wonderful defence. Ten points, sorry, to the Dutch now. Great defence from the Dutch. Once again, it's that smash across the body into the right hip. Of Selena Peak that does the damage. <laughs> Scores are tied 21 all. Big pull for too high. Shuttle being struck above the waist. Real argument from it was quite high. <laughs> Bit of a giveaway having the line on your shirt with the sponsor's name on. And that was around about that height. But what a defensive shot to make up for that. Once yeah. again, the cross court drive. Yeah, but again, Anthony, disappointed uh, in the Dutch pair. This is the good player, and look at that shot, just fantastic. Had it been her younger sister, I don't think it would have gone anywhere there, that area. But she's so strong in defence, able to turn it and place the shuttle anywhere she wants. See, the, the standard reply from that smash, as you know, is, is to come back straight. But as I say, there's a handful of players can do it off a very powerful smash, can take it in the forehand side and turn it cross court. And Muskins was taken right out of the play there. A tremendous shot from her. Brilliant drive from Muskins. Oh, but the gap was there on the cross again. Just a little bit too much on it. And her again, Anthony. Such a talent there to turn that shuttle. Under real pressure as well. That would have been shot of the match so far, but as it is, Dutch have another game point. A great attack from the Malaysians. Malaysians do seem to be picking more on the defence of Selena Peak. She doesn't seem to be able to retrieve the shuttles quite as well as her partner. She well, certainly couldn't turn that on the backhand side there, Anthony, and I think that's what the Malaysians were discussing. 23 all. 21 minutes been played. This time, Muskins reads the cross drive from the smash. Game point to the Dutch. Lovely touch overhead. Good disguise. Yeah. See, they had the younger sister pinned there and then they changed it. To the strongest defensive player, which was silly. Now they're trying to be patient again, very, very good. Oh, it's landed in. Great anticipation at the net from Muskins. You could see the movement forwards to take the drop shot early. First in fact, the Dutch pair, the unseeded Dutch pair, that take the opening game 25 23 in 23 minutes. 
It's been great to see thousands of children here at the Emirates Arena this week, participating in the badminton Scotland Play Badminton Festivals and development activities. They've taken advantage of the fun activities and guidance from Badminton Scotland's coaches, together with assistance from students from Glasgow's Cardone College and City of Glasgow College, as well as the Glasgow Commonwealth Apprentices provided by Glasgow Life. Well, a very exciting opening game to finals day. 25-23 in the opening game to the Dutch pair, Selena Peak and Afia Muskens. Second game, level play. I found very interesting to see that the Dutch pair do not have a coach with them today. You know, why would that be the case? I think the system's in a little bit of turmoil at the moment. They don't have a national coach in place. And uh, several players just meet and uh, practice on their own. Uh, we haven't seen anyone from Holland all week here uh, working with the players. But they have been about the circuit for a number of years. They're very experienced, although they're young. Um, so they know what they're about. And I, I think here they have to focus on the younger sister. The, the older one's loaded with talent and uh, ability, and she's lots of power overhead as well and deception. I just think if, if they did have a coach, I'm sure they would be saying they've got to focus the attack on the younger sister. I also try to frustrate the, the older one. Just coming in there and hitting a, a lovely net for uh, what a great start to the second game for the Malaysians. Three love the lead. And obviously, coaches allowed onto court midway point, end of every game. Then Dan, can a coach make the difference between a win and a loss? I believe they can if the player is calm enough. Uh, sometimes I used to talk to players. <laughs> You can give a player too much information, obviously, but you give them one or two things that are very, very important for them. And I think something like you want to pin the young girl in the right-hand court, the even court, so you can expose a forehand defence and move, move the older one around the court so that you're not giving her time under the shuttle where she can really wind up and uh, hit the shuttle extremely hard. I do believe they can affect it, and uh, I think, but they, as I say, the Dutch uh, don't need any assistance here. I'm sure they can work that out themselves. But a much more positive start from the Malaysians than they did in the start of the first game. 27 minutes been played. Shuttle's gone well long. That is the fast side, Anthony. That all week long, that's been the slightly quicker side. Great defence. Look how fast. Sorry, look how far the, the Dutch are so keen to press the front of the court to try and get the left to keep the attack. You see it here, both players moving, putting Muskins there, almost on the front line. And Peak hitting the winner. You know, Anthony can be the best coach in the world, but if the player's not got the ability out there, it's all down to the players. Coaches can assist, but it's the players that do it, and all the hard work and the winning. It's the coach's fault when you lose, of course. 
Absolutely. Got to blame somebody. 5-3. Malaysians lead. Oh! On the net cord for Pete. With the smash. Slightly deviated the shuttle. And then was not able to retrieve. Very, very quick serve from Pete. Goes into the net. Can't afford to give away cheap points. That's called wide. Very, very close indeed. I did think the shuttle was going to land in. This is interesting. If we can see a replay of that, here it comes. I think the right mm. choice was made. Yes, it was a good call. Brilliant defence from Lynn. Once again, the attack going the wrong direction. Absolutely no doubt in my mind, Anthony, they have got to give her as little of the shuttle as they can and, and play on the younger sister. She's so good, yeah, controlled that whole rally there, even, even as soon as she had the first chance to hit and come forward and they win the point. But her control of the shuttle is absolutely exceptional here. I mean, is it? Is it possible to literally give Lynn no shots whatsoever? Well, she's going to serve and receive serve, so <laughs> my advice would be that's the only time she touches the shuttle. But obviously, you have to hit the occasional shot to her to get her away, to, to allow you, your partnership to expose the younger sister in defence and attack. I think the Dutch aren't in any trouble when the younger is hitting overhead, but they're in trouble when the older one is. Good placement down the middle of the court from Lynn. Once again, she's involved. Every time she's involved, the pair are very dangerous. 8 6 in the second game. I would like to see this low serve if it was possible because I, I just feel a racket head's coming up all the time. But the hand is high, but then when you see that. Oh, and that's a great switch. Seven, the attack. Nine. Wants to land and then to earn. It's Muskins, the aggressor on the court. She's the one that wants to get forwards all the time. And I think that was a wrong choice from her. There. She had a short left and a load. The older sister was straight. Oh! Lynn was straight. She should have hit the other sister. I would put her under enormous pressure, and mentally she would have to. She would have to be very, very strong to deal with that, knowing that she's going to get a lot of the show. Sometimes it can improve her play, knowing that she's going to get everything hit at her. But at this moment in time, I don't think her defence would stand up. Three-point lead, 10-7. Yeah! They've got a four-point yeah, lead. The Malaysians have turned the match round well. They now lead 11-7, midway point in the second game.
Well done to Alice Cashmore and Judy Murray as well. I think she's going to have a good time here today too. Players turn, return to action after the midway point. 11-7, the Malaysians lead. Three minutes been played so far. Should this go the distance to the three games, it would take the game over an hour. Could that have some difference on the outcome of the match, Dan? The longer the match goes on. Yeah, I think both, both sets of players are very fit. Uh, I don't think it, it would have a, an effect in so much as the physical side, but I think the mental side it will have. I think they've got to get the shuttle away from her. She's totally in control here and uh, just played a lift there into the gap, which was superb. She's a very, very gifted player. Yeah, Gui Lin Ung, former Malaysian national player. In fact, her favourite game was mixed doubles, playing with Ku Kin Kat. I know how good she was. I lost to the pair several times throughout my career. She was incredibly gifted and obviously still continues to be so, even though they train and play full time, but they're studying at the University of Loughborough as well. Goes wide from peak, and this time it's the Malaysians that have the seven point lead, 14 7. What a turnaround. Now, Dan, you talked earlier about the, the, the end of the Malaysians at now is the quicker end. Now, is that the difference? Is it easier that end? Well, I, I, if they were under pressure and they're lifting, as you know, then they've got to be very balanced so that they can keep the shuttle in. When you're under pressure, you, sometimes you just tend to over hit and the, the drift would take it out. But I think that they've just been very, very patient here, but when they get the chance, they will go for it. And the, the drift behind the shuttle, obviously, it goes down a little quicker. But this girl is controlling everything. See, and I think she's also worked out that the, the Dutch can't do a lot against them when they give them a slow shuttle. She's playing a lot of drops and a couple of cross drops there and eventually got the mistake from peak. If she gives them pace, then they can turn her, and she does look slightly big in frame. Uh, so perhaps her fitness um, may be affected the longer the game goes, but uh, she's dominant here, and to me, it doesn't look in any physical space at all. And another mistake from the Dutch. 16-7. Now they are a younger pair, the Dutch players, showing a little bit of inexperience in this second game. 16-7. Malaysia is looking very confident and controlled indeed. And that goes long so from there. Eight, 16. I do think if the Dutch had a coach here, that he could certainly help them now because they, they have to focus on the other one. Uh, Lynn is controlling everything. You see where they took that smash from her there, but when Lynn hits a smash, there's no way they're standing in the front line. Oh. Another lift long from Ern. That's better from Nine, the Dutch. 16. Picking out the, the weaker player. I mean, that sounds a little bit harsh. As all the four players on court play at a very, very high level indeed. They are, Anthony, and I think the Dutch have to play this as a handicap. They're playing a handicap match. He's just given a point there and deemed that as the, she's made an attempt to receive that low serve. Well, that looked like a terrible decision to me. I didn't see her move her feet, but perhaps if we could have a replay of it, you'll see if her feet move. If her feet move, then she's... But she's not moved her feet. She's no. She has made no attempt to play that shuttle. I don't understand how the umpire can give a point for that. Well, I must admit, some players will try the gamesmanship thing and try and keep their opponents waiting for too long, but that didn't seem long at all. And actually, like you said, Dan, no movement of the feet. 
even the arms didn't even look ready to return the serve. So a little bit harsh. But I don't think they'll get this one turned around. Fortunately for the Malaysians, they are leading by six. Well, the more you see it again and again, it really does seem a very bizarre situation. Will that have any effect on the concentration levels of the Malaysians? Maybe so, because that was a wild swing at the net from her. Three, four mistakes she's yeah. made. 16. And that's why they have to find her, especially now. Especially now. They should be keeping this. The Dutch should be keeping it like a handicap. Uh, ladies doubles are playing with one very strong player and one slightly weaker player. And you've got to play the game with a weaker player if you want to win. comes up with the goods on defence. A little bit baffling, like you say, Dan, to watch the Dutch players. I mean, Hui Lin Ung is seeing so much of the shuttle that, you know, her partner, her sister, is being made to look good as well. Six points to the lead again, 17-11. 40 minutes been played. Well, that was a little bit cheeky. Lynn pretending to play the shot, knowing it was going wide, pulling the racket away at the last second. Three required now to take the second game. Oh. And that's clever from Muskens. Lynn does like to dominate the game, but tries not to do too much of the work rate. That's where her slightly s sort of smaller younger sister does all the hard work good placement from Muskins on the cross drop it's going along as well 13 18. now last chance really for the Dutch to get back into this game have to get a good run now Good rotation, badminton from the Malaysians. First of all, in on the attack, the rotation, and coming with a power smash. Good placement. Two required. Considering they're leading 1914, they have kind of struggled to find a length when they're lifting the Malaysians. Ah! But Lynn's happy with that one. The finger point 14. with the celebration. That gives them six game points. 2014.
very casual rally. He's in a mistake from Lynn. Still have the five game points. the net from Muskins gives the game to the Malaysians and after 43 minutes of play it's one game all game one 21 15 and we're going to three sets Badminton Scotland could not function in the manner that it does without the extensive army of volunteers who have affectionately become known as Smiley's people. We'd like to acknowledge them once again this year and thank them for giving their time so freely and enthusiastically to this event. Players back onto court after the break. The Malaysians in yellow this side of the court. Played very good second game indeed. They lost the opening game at 25-23. Took the second at 21-15. And it will be them to serve. It's the younger sister, Hui. Final game. To serve to Muskins. Lynn has played a nice cross court net shot. Peak read the game very well. Tight spinning net shot, unretrievable. Lynn started that rally in the, the backhand side and then had three corners of the court there. And uh, she, she's doing a lot of work. But she is absolute quality when she's on the shipping, and that's a, a lovely shot from her sister there. It's nice and early and soft into court. I think the, du the Dutch have to get back to a pressing game, have to try and get it flat again, but especially onto the young sister if they're going to win. Uh, and if they're not, if they're going to play up and down, they have to play it with the young sister again. As soon as they let Lynn into it, uh, she dominates the rally, makes all the right choices. Very, very clever player. Rather slack from Lynn. Three, Saw in the second game the quality she possesses, but didn't get her feet moving at all well to that net kill. That's just because I said she was absolute quality. <laughs> Indeed, the curse of the commentator. And we have talked about the far end that the Dutch pair are at being the better end. And they've gone off to a great start in the third game, 4-1. Shuttle has landed good. Muskins convinced. Peak was convinced it was going long. But I'm sure the slight drift there just held it in enough to hit the line. That's the way the Dutch have to get back to the that's in. That was in. 
they have to be hitting from midcourt and pressing all the time to try and keep the Malaysians under real pressure. Can't help but keep going back to the thing of that's where the coach would be giving that kind of advice. You know, I know we're talking about intelligent ladies that know how to play the game. They've got a lot of experience. They've won a title before. But quite often having that somebody behind you to keep reminding you can make the difference. And that's a beautiful return of serve from Muskins. Clipping the net cord as the shuttle travelled across the court. Placement down the middle. So once again, they keep transferring it on to the older sister, Lynn. When she's in the game, she's the dominant player in the match. Five all. I think they feel under pressure and, and they're not thinking clearly at this moment in time. That's much better. That one goes just long with the back line. Muskins has impressed me um, with her play. I, I like the way she's always looking to take the initiative to go forward in defence and it's a very good smash in attack. But they've got to get clarity of thought here and play the game with the younger sister if they want to secure this title. A nice cross court block from him. It's a rather wild cross court backhand drive from Muskins there. Like you say, clarity of thinking. And it's six all. I just get the feeling that the Dutch need the good lead at the midway point as they are going to finish on the slightly tougher end. I just can't believe the call. Definitely the forehand side of a defence. Well, I think that was out. It was definitely out, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, a Dutch line judge somewhere from in the arena. Very difficult often for the line judges when the shuttle is coming across the court. Because obviously, it is the cork that has to land out. Sometimes the feathers can be in line with the, sh the actual line. Wonderful defence. <laughs> But too much too soon. Now that's exactly what they have to do. They have to pick the sister out, the young sister out, the way they're doing here, and keep the shuttle on her. She's in trouble. Keep it on her till, till her defence breaks down completely. Or they hit a winner like that. Just as you say that, Dan, they do the complete opposite. But a rare slack shot from Lynn. Nine, six. Three point gap opens up. 51 minutes been played. That's great attack from the Malaysians. Seven, nine. See the power of Lynn forcing a weak reply from Pete, but very good anticipation from the younger sister there at the net. And the younger sister being very intelligent here, lifting cross court to try and invite the attack back onto Lynn. I couldn't believe Lynn switched the play there, but she did. <laughs> because her younger sister's thinking very well at the moment. It's a wild cross-court smash from Peak. Just no need for that at this point in the match. front there from Muskin, she's so alert at the moment, looking for any chance at all, very good. 
Yeah, I'm really keyed up as well. 10-8 now to the Dutch pair. Just one to get into the midway point. Okay. So trying to do the right thing again, trying um, to be aggressive yeah. in towards the net. Just making the mistake. 9-10. Don't know why she was trying to turn that, Anthony, right in front of her with the young sister, just to play soft in front of her and make her think about what she's going to do next. That's brilliant anticipation from Lynn, but like you say again, Earn, the younger player, was on the straight and the block comes in cross. Lynn anticipates. Go. Ten all. And again, it's on Lynn. She's the only girl on the court that can find those kind of angles. And with that kind of play, that brings up a one-point lead for the Malaysians. 11-10 midway point in the third game. Sister Lynn giving lots of advice to her younger sister Ern. It's Ern who's going to be serving. And they lead by one point. And we are very nicely poised. 11 10 in the deciding game. 55 minutes been played. So players may be feeling a little bit of fatigue as well. A very tight low serve from Ern. Pink finding the net on reply. I think the interesting thing for me there, Anthony, was at the break, the Malaysians were laughing and enjoying it. Whereas the Dutch felt that they do feel under pressure at the moment, very, very intense, a very serious break. But the Malaysians were having a laugh and a joke with the coach there. So this will be interesting here to see if the, the Malaysians keep doing what they've been doing well, keep the attack, and if the, the Dutch can try and find the younger sister. I can't believe it's taken them so long to work this out. Seem to be continuing with that, don't they? Continually playing on Lynn. Lynn, the outstanding yeah. player on court, that's for sure. She's been a former world junior gold medalist. And that was in mixed doubles. She's shown her quality all the way through this match. Yeah. The Malaysians need to remember they are at the quicker end. That shuttle sails longer the back line. Scores a tie, 12 all. And it was the young sister that gave them the point as well. <laughs> well, that was fantastic movement from Lynn. She normally doesn't like to move quickly around the court, likes to conserve her energy, but the leap around the head, making a very easy put away for her partner. from the Malaysians, but they got away with it. Oh! But a bit of lack of concentration from Lynn. Gifting the net put away.
And that's gone long again from her. She has struggled to find a letter from that end of the court. There is Mike Adams, the coach for the Loughborough University team. Former England player himself, played for England five times. See, the, the Dutch are not under any pressure from the young sister is hitting over here. But when Lynn hits overhead, they're under enormous pressure. They've got to expose the youngster. They've got to be moving her whenever they can. And then when she hits, they can put the pressure on. Yeah, once again in that rally, the pressure towards her. And it brings up two-point lead. 15-13 now to the Dutch. time the round the head goes into the net from Lynn. 16-13. She's maybe just tiring now in the game. She's been doing a lot of work in the second and third sets. That's the hour mark up. 60 minutes been played. Wonderful rally, patience from the Dutch, finished off with a lovely little stop drop at the net from Selina Peak. That gives them f a four point lead and only require four more for the championship. three because the return of serve from Lynn well the Malaysians just seem to have fallen apart then well they have and, and I do think it is through a little bit of tiredness on the older sister's part um, but even, even though that's happening they're still in the game if the Dutch can stay clear in their thoughts and find the young sister most of the time then I think they'll run out the winners but uh, if Lynn's allowed to control the game then she's the one that can win it for Malaysia Damn! And that's just what the Dutch don't want to be doing, is giving away very cheap points like that. Seeing the error coming from the younger sister again, unfortunately. Well, the lead back to four. 19 15 to the Dutch pair. And they just require two more for the title. But as you saw in that slow motion, I, I wouldn't blame the younger sister there. I think Lynn is tired. She, she's lifting cross court. She should be lifting straight to keep the attack on her. Sense the fatigue. Very patient in this rally. Oh. And eventually the smashes are going down. Incredible work rate from Selena Peake. 
and Muskins. And that brings up five match points. 2015, 63 minutes have been played so far. And it just looks to me like the Dutch intensity has stayed at much higher level throughout this third game. Some power behind that smash from Lynn. Straight down the centre. They now need a run of four points. And that's gone wide from Lynn. It is, in fact. Afia Muskins, Selena Peak, who take the title. The first Grand Prix title win. <laughs> Obvious happiness from the pair. Great celebrations from the Dutch. unseeded pair showing what they're capable of on the world tour and that's now nine tournaments they've played together two wins to their names partnerships so far and they look like a force to reckon with certainly on the european tour and i'm sure they will be going around the world as well There is the final result from the women's doubles. Muskins and Peak take the opening final. 25 23, 21 15, 21 16 in the deciding game. 65 minutes of play. And as the players leave, we'll be moving on to the next final of the day which will be a women's singles encounter between Carolina Marion and Kirsty Gilmore, the home girl from Scotland. I think, I think the presentation's on next.
tunes from Scotland. And the ladies doubles finalists, the Malaysians in yellow, followed by their opponents, Muskins, and Peak of the Netherlands. And there are the ladies doubles trophies, and a fabulous ladies doubles final it was indeed. Three grueling sets of badminton. The lead switching time and time again. The quality play from all four players. And the outstanding player for me was Lim from Malaysia. And I think her fitness really told at the end of the game. And that was the deciding factor. The Dutch pair were able to capitalise on the slight lack of fitness from the Malaysians. They came through as worthy winners to take the title. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to put hands together for our presentation party to present the medals and notes and trophies. Ian Campbell from Badminton Scotland, Ian Hooper, Director of Sport and Special Projects at Glasgow Life, medals. Paul Jetson, Managing Director of UX UK Limited, and Stuart Turner, Event Director of Event Scotland. There are the runners up. Hui Ern Ung, Hui Lin Ung of Malaysia, the number four seeds. Finalists in this tournament for the last three years. Once again, it's runners up for them. Considering they are full-time students at the University of Loughborough, really does show the commitment and the quality that the two girls possess. Being sisters, it must be quite difficult at times. And obviously, show great friendship. Too many signs of disappointment from the Malaysians. Another the second the time from the Netherlands. these two Ian ladies Muskins have beaten the Malaysians. Afia Muskins and Selena Peak of the Netherlands. And it's their second title in six weeks. Taking the Bitburger Open title against the opponents that they've played today. And now they are the Scottish Open Grand Prix Badminton Champions. And a great performance it was. They eventually got the tactics correct. But it took some time to work it out. We now received medals. Checks for the winners. Receive their flowers now. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2013 Scottish Obvious Open signs of delight. And Peak. It's been a fantastic week for them. They are still very young competitors. And they have a very bright future indeed. Very clever, intelligent young ladies. They will all be travelling the world playing tournaments in the future. That brings us to the end of the prize ceremony. And the next game we'll be bringing the action from will be the ladies' singles between Carolina Marin and Kirsty Gilmore from Scotland.
Obviously, there was a disappointment earlier today when we found out there would be no men's doubles final as Anders Kart, Ruth Masmussen and Kin Astrup Sorensen had to withdraw through injury. So the presentation ceremony is being taken place. There is Mads Conrad Peterson on the left, Mads Pila calling on the right, the fifth seeds taking the title. Sure, that's not the way they would like to have taken the title, but looking at the way they've played so far this week, they were the favourites for me. And I think even had there been a match today, that's where they would be standing on the podium. So congratulations to them. We look forward to more action from the Scottish Open Grand Prix in Glasgow. More to come. Thank you to our finalists. Congratulations to them.